Number 14 then from the 2013 Advanced Higher Maths. A second order differential equation. 11 marks. And there's an exponential term at the end, which isn't too bad. They're quite easy to differentiate. It's certainly better than having those sines and cosines, for instance. Well, the first type anyway is going to be, just forget that. Because I'm going to solve what's called the homogeneous equation. The solution to that is the complementary function. That will be the, a function of x, which if you feed it through this, will give you an answer of zero, or the actual answer you require. And to find that complementary function, I'll form this auxiliary equation. Now, without going into the ins and outs of why this is formed and the types of solutions it produces, basically your auxiliary equation is made up from the coefficients of the three terms formed into a quadratic. So there's one, so it's m squared, whoops, minus 6m plus 9 should equal 0. What's really happening, of course, is the type of function that would solve this equal to 0 would have to be e to the x, or rather e to the mx. Since it's only an exponential that can keep repeating itself and therefore be cancelled out down to zero. And of course contained within e to the x are sines x and cosines x because they can cancel each other out in their combinations. So this will tell me the powers then of this. Well, solving that, I've got, that's a square because I've got three threes and that makes a six. So that's a square. I've got m minus three squared, which unfortunately gives me just one answer. Now, a second-order differential equation requires two solutions because two constants would pop out from the solution to that. And this is only going to give me one. This has given me one just now. This is saying that if I put e to the 3x through it, it'll work. Well, that's only one part. Well, it can be shown that if that works, some function times it may work as well, and if you feed that through, it turns out that this function has to be a linear expression, like mx plus c, I've used those letters already, or ax plus b. That, in fact, turns out just to be the solution of f dash x equals 0, but I'm going into parts I didn't really want to go into. Basically here, if I've only got the one solution, and I know that I require two of them, I can form the two of them by taking, for my complementary function, by taking, it's not that, y equals, I'll just put e to the 3x here, plus x lots of e to the 3x, and any linear combination of them, that would form the complementary function. You may well just do that automatically, going from there to there. Another thing you could do is you could maybe just factorise that out and have a plus bx times e to the 3x, which looks more like the origin of this extra function. Right, I've put that up here, out of the way. Now, remember, that was the homogeneous equation. I was actually wanting to solve it equal to 4e to the 3x. And straight away, there's a bit of a clash. Because according to this, if I put in e to the 3x, the whole thing will come to zero. So that can't work. If I put in x times e to the 3x, the whole thing will come to zero. Because those were solutions of the homogeneous equation. The equation equal to zero. So if I'm looking for a particular integral to this, then the form of that particular integral can't be some number, I've used a and b for my constants already, can't be c lots of e to the 3x, or x e to the 3x, because I've used them up already and given the answer 0, so you'd have to go on to the next one. Multiply by x again, and have x squared e to the 3x. And I'll just have to feed that through that. So, y I'll just use a brief notation here. So, y dashed would be it's a product, so we'd have multi differentiate the first part. 2cx e to the 3x, plus leave that part alone. I've left enough space there. cx squared, and that just goes to e to the 3x, but multiplied by 3. Differentiate it again. Well, this part here will be, that's 2c now for the first part, e to the 3x, plus multiplying by 3 will be 6cx e to the 3x. Run out of space. Now that's just what I started with. So that'll just be 3 times what this produced. So I'll put plus 3 times and that part produced this whole thing 
and looks a wee bit recursive there. 2CX e to the 3X plus 3CX squared e to the 3X. Or you can just differentiate both those terms, they're both going to split into two parts. But the important thing is I want to add up all the bits that I've got. Well, I've got a 9CX squared. I've got a 6CX and a 6CX is a 12CX. And just a 2C lots of e to the 3x. Maybe while I'm at it, I'll just pop out this part as well. That's 2, or if I put it in the other order, that's 3CX squared plus 2CX lots of e to the 3x. Now I just have to feed these three parts into this and equate it to the required result. So I want this. Now I'm not going to bother with the e to the three x's, they can stay out as a factor. So I want one of them. Let's put it in a bracket, just to stop it running away. Minus six of these. Plus nine of them. And that lot will be multiplying e to the 3x, and that lot should come to 4, e to the 3x. So obviously, this big dot here has to equal 4. And what have we got? Well, we've got 9cx squared, 9cx squared, take away 18cx squared, so they're gone. I've got 12c minus 12c for the x, so they're gone. So in the end, all I've got is 2c. So that means that in the end, the 2C has to make the 4. So that means that C equals 2. So there's my particular integral. My particular integral is going to be Y equals 2X squared E to the 3X. Now, taking the two parts together, you can get the general solution. So I'll put this down here. I'll just fit it in. So my general solution will be the complementary function plus the particular integral added together. So I've got y equals a plus bx e to the 3x plus 2x squared e to the 3x. That's what that all reduced down to. Quite nice and neat. And as if that wasn't enough to do, you're going to have to continue your merry little dance before you're paid your 11 marks. That was just the general solution. You have to find the particular solution that satisfies these initial conditions. You'll have to find what A and B are for this. Well, when x is 0, at least that's not too bad, I suppose x, uh, y is 1. y is 1 when x is 0. So I'll still get 8, that term will disappear, that term will disappear. That will go to 0, so that's e to the 0, and e to the 0 is just 1, so a is 1, so that's not so bad. a is 1, so I can immediately feed that in. So I've got y equals 1 plus bx plus 2x squared e to the 3x. There's no point letting a run around and annoy you when you can pin it down. Now the next part, I'll need to differentiate that. Right, well, well how many times have we done that so far? So differentiating this. I've got a product. So the first part of the product would be, I've got b plus 4x. Leave that, e to the 3x. Plus, leave the first one alone, 1 plus bx plus 2x squared. Now differentiate that, that'll be e to the 3x. Multiply the whole thing by 3. There we go, just enough room. Now, put that in. What have we got? When x is 0, the derivative should be negative 1. When x is 0, what am I left with? I've still got the b, that goes. That goes e to the 0. I've still got the 3, I've still got the 1. That goes to 0, that goes to 0, and that goes to 0. So I'm left with, that's a 1 times a b, which is a b. That's a 3 times a 1 times a 1, which is a 3. Take the 3 across, and that gives me a negative 4. Which means, finally... I've got my particular solution, which is y equals 1 minus 4x plus 2x squared, or the other way around, if you prefer, e to the 3x.